Gary, a lot of people think that faith is just a magic wand and everything is just perfect and there's never any pressure or stress or difficulty, but that's not true, is it? Not at all. And so you wrote a book called Six Things I Did the Hard Way, or I Learned the Hard Way, yeah. and we've worked through and persevered through many situations and obstacles to get the promises of God, right? That's right. So I want to talk a little bit about some of those hard things, uh, the keys to going through those. Maybe somebody is going through something hard today, and they're like, Gary, you make it look easy, and you talk about the kingdom and faith, but right now I'm in a tough situation. I'm mm -hmm. in something hard. So they need some encouragement. That's yeah, what we want to give yeah. you today is some okay. encouragement that if you're in something hard, yes, there's some hard things that you have to work through, but it's worth it. The kingdom's worth it. Mm -hmm. The fruit is worth it. So what are, what are one of those hard things that you've learned? There's a lot of things we have learned together. Right. Uh, but one of the biggest is understanding the time frame of the amen and there it is. There's always, there's always a process uh, you receive from heaven direction and, and insight. That and that's the exciting part, That's right? the exciting part. <laughs> I heard from God, you know, and right. I'm ready to launch out. But there's always a process to capture or create or harvest that direction. And that takes knowledge in the earth realm. It takes courage. And courage is one of the biggest things that I had to learn once I got the direction. You know, I always say faith will take you to the edge of the cliff. Courage is what causes you to actually jump and trust <laughs> God. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you have, to, you have to do both, and there's a process. Do you have any story about where it took courage to make oh, that? Oh, I've got a lot. Of I know you do. I know you a lot do. Of, yeah, courage. But where God spoke something to you clearly, but it got tough, and it took courage to you know, go for it, do you it. You will never have anything waiting for something to happen. When Peter had taxes to pay, Jesus said, go catch a fish. Uh, when he fed the multitudes, he gave them an instruction of what to do. Okay, so heaven intersects the earth realm, but we have to walk out the earth realm with the power of God and the direction of God. But one of the, I mean, there's so many stories, but one that I remember clearly, which wasn't that many years ago, is when I received this. Uh, we were in prayer uh, at church. Uh, the team was praying, and our daughter Amy began to prophesy. Now, I thought, you know, initially she was prophesying to, just prophesying to the congregation. In and, general. In general, but the Holy Spirit stopped me and says, this is you, okay? I grabbed a pencil and paper because the Holy Spirit said, <laughs> this is for you. And it said, the harvest, I wrote this down, the harvest is too big for you. I am stretching you. That's enough to get you to think, stretching, you know. Right. Only by my spirit can you understand what is about to happen. Will you step out? Let me lead you to hard things beyond your understanding, the impossible. Now, right away, you don't, right away, you understand what God's wanting you to do. He's wanting to have courage. He's wanting to give you something beyond yourself, right. a plan, a direction, a and Just task. the word stretch. Yeah, <laughs> just the first part. It's like, you know, just the first words, so let me stretch you. I go, oh, been through that before. <laughs> yes, Okay. And so the hard things, the impossible things. Now, we love to celebrate the victory, of course, in these hard things and impossible things, but it takes courage to actually step into them. So immediately, not long after I received that, we received an offer at this point in time in our, in our ministry to go daily on television. <laughs> now, we were doing a weekly, and at that time, and not, well, just at that time, we had just built the, the Now Center and Money still was, you know, fairly tight. We were, at that time, really just covering the television bills as they were. And now God says, okay, trust me, and here's this offer to take it daily. And, of course, you know, daily changes the bill instantly. You don't, not a lot of time to gear up. You know, you're just going right. to go daily. And that was a tough decision, but we felt it was from the Lord, and so we, we, launched, we said yes. Uh, so that was a tough decision. And then we began to fall behind on the, the bill. Now, they told me, the people that we, we said yes to, they told me, now, initially what happens is you're going to, it's going to get a little tight because, you know. Right. And it really it literally, literally is like jumping off a it's cliff. It's like jumping off a cliff. Because you're jumping yeah. from something that's steady yeah. once a week to five, seven yeah. times, or like, boom. And yeah, plus, yeah, plus And the there's a catch-up time where yeah. people 
find out who you are and want to be partnership, you know, right. And of course, you. our whole uh, our whole mission is to share the kingdom. Uh, God spoke to us years right. ago and said, I'm sending you to the nations right. and I'm going to send you to the nations to proclaim my a covenant of financial blessing and how it operates. And he said, wherever I send you, I'll pay for it. So we had that word and we stepped out. So then the bills fell behind. Now we, we anticipated that, but now it's six months down the road and we didn't just fall behind. Now we're you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars behind. And you feel that pressure you're teaching oh, about the, the kingdom and finances. Well, the name of the show is Fixing right, the Money Thing. Right. So right. we get uh, an email from the attorneys that represent the buyers, you know, the, 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 the TV time and all that. And they, they said, uh, we just want to know what you're going to do about this half million dollars that you're behind. What's your plan, you know? And of course, I was thinking, well, you know, I'm not doing this. Uh, yeah, it's like, uh, well, I'm not I don't doing know. this daily thing. I can't risk, I can't risk uh, defiling the name of God. You know, I can't, my integrity, ha you know, mm -hmm. I, I can't risk not having integrity paying the bills. Certainly. I mean, certainly. that's the name of the program, and that's, certainly. that's scriptural. That's, that's what we do as believers, we have integrity. And so I, I, got, I got discouraged right there. And of course, I remember you helped me, you know, and you just always, your, your response would be, what did God say? That's all you say. What did God say? That's what it has to come back down to, right? That's what did, right. God, what did God, God say? say? What did if God, God say? If God said it, That's then right. it has to be... What did God be, say? Everything has to be found. Uh, what did God say to you? Well, you know, just to be really honest with you and everyone's listening and watching today, sometimes when you feel under pressure, you don't want to hear what God said. Absolutely, because, right. You know, it's like, I know what you said, but, you know, I got this situation right. here. It's and, a hard thing. Yeah, it's, it's a hard, a hard thing. It's a hard situation. It's but, like Moses uh, and the Israelites were up against the Red Sea. Right. And it really right. is a Red Sea experience where it's, do I trust my intuition, what I think, what I feel comfortable doing? Right, right. Or do I get out of my comfort zone and obey God and go to the Red Sea when it looks like it's a dead, it's a dead <laughs> it end. It looks like a dead end street. Right. Uh, so uh, we prayed and, and I had some brothers and I think you were there uh, just pray for me. And I felt that weight lift. And amazingly, two days after that prayer, I had a dream. In the dream, I saw stacks of checks and I saw the amounts in the checks. I the saw names the, the names who wrote the checks. <laughs> I saw all of these checks. And that next weekend at church, it was a normal weekend, we had a half million dollars came in uh, and we paid it current that, like that week, which is happens. totally out of, out right, of the, yeah. the blue. I mean, right. but I saw those same checks, the same numbers, the same people. I saw exactly what I saw in the dream. And I, when I woke up, I had that dream. I knew it was over with. I, I mean, I told you, I said, it's done. It's yeah. paid for. And that's where faith is. You, you already knew it was done before it, before it even happened. And then when it happened in one weekend, God caught it one all up. One weekend caught it up and never been behind since. Right. Now, that was a Red Sea. That was a red, it yeah, parted, he had it to, parted yeah. in one weekend. Boom. Well, it takes courage, though, because we're typically going to lean to our own understanding. Right. And the Bible says, trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He shall direct your paths. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge Him. I always say it's like if you're in a meeting with a chairman, and the chairman says, I, I want to acknowledge the guy back there with the red sweater on. What it means is trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding Acknowledge him, let him speak, let him speak, and he will lead you. You know, he's going to give you the solution. He'll direct and your path. He'll direct your path. And learning, um, so you have to understand, I think a lot of Christians get um, hung up or they quit before they start because they don't understand it takes courage. So many of them think, well, I must have missed God because I feel all this pressure. It looks impossible. That, it, it's not really anything to do with it. If God said it, if you feel that God said it, then he's going to meet you there, but he doesn't meet you till you step out. That's true. You remember when That's Moses true. in the Red Sea, it's, it's when you step out. And raise his staff. <laughs> raise his staff, or when Joshua led them across the, the, the River Jordan, when their toes touch the water. Now, this is a raging, raging flood, mm -hmm. and God told Joshua, lead the Israelites across this river. It's a raging flood. You cannot cross the river. But it says, the second the priest's toes touched the river, it parted. And that's how it always is. You look at all the stories in the Bible. You have the story of Gideon 
you know, when he said yes to God, when he uh, followed after God, it says then he was anointed. You know, you uh, remember before he was accused, you know, he thought he was the least of all of his family and had no power, no ability to help his situation. But when we have courage to receive God's word and accept it, knowing he'll do his part, right. but it does take courage. I agree. It's like a defining moment. Mm -hmm. You're up against the sea. You look at what God said. You look at what your faith has believed. And that's where I think a lot of people get disappointed faith because in that moment, instead of being courageous, think of David and Goliath. Mm -hmm. You know, he steps out and Goliath taunts him. And there's always that taunt that always that situation where it looks like the enemy is trying to say, see, it's not working. Right. See, God's not faithful. He's not going to come through. You didn't hear this. Yep. And, and you get all, you, all these voices try to bombard exactly. your mind. And that's where the battle is actually won in our thoughts and what we're, what we're allowing ourselves to. Right. And do we change the picture and become double-minded? You have to write it down. You or have do we stay to stay on the word of God. In other words, I wrote this down. You have to mark the spot. Yeah, it's on an offering envelope of church. It's on an offering envelope of church. Whatever you could find, you yeah, got to write it down. Yeah, I just grabbed these paper. Right. Uh, when God told us, to, he's going to send us to the nations, there was a ring that uh, was in that, that, that day that offering. God used to, to give me a memorial. Memorials are important. When you hear God in a major directional or something that's, um, you know, it takes courage, mm -hmm. you want to always mark the spot and write down what he told you because pressure also speaks. And when you get out there into the pressure, and there's going to be pressure, the enemy's yes. going to make sure there's pressure. The it's a given. Parable of Sower says that trouble and pressure, persecution comes for the word's sake. Mm -hmm. So you have to mark down that time. You have to hold on to it. And you fight with that memorial. You fight with that moment God spoke to you. Now, wait a minute. God said he's going to pay for it. He's going to send us to the nations. He's paying for it. You have to remind yourself. What did God what say? What did God say? And that's what you kept saying. What did God say? What did God say? And that's... Another valuable aspect, having someone that's on your team that is helping you, reminding you, you know, together. We all need encouragement. How it works. That's what we want to do for people. We want to that's encourage right. you that God's word is true and what he said will come to pass. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.